Okay, now we're just going to dump the eggs into this tub here. And that'll help acclimate them to the temperature of the hatchery. We're just going to let them soak here with this water running in. Rinse the rest in and we'll be ready to, ready to jar them up here pretty quick. Now we're just going to grab some jars off the second battery here and, and bring them over and get them ready to, to jar up the eggs. What we're going to do, so we have these numbers on them here, and I'm going to wipe off the number. We're, the number is going to be the date on which we took the eggs. So I'll wipe off that, and today is the 23rd, I believe. Yep. So then we'll write 23 on here. So once we have the number 23 on here, I'm going to take the hose, we'll just put a little bit of water in the jar. That'll kind of cushion the fall as we're, as we're dumping the eggs in. And we'll get a few jars ready here so we're ready to go once the eggs are acclimated. Okay, I'm just going to put two and a half quarts in, in these jars here and then we'll carry them over to the battery and, and get some water flowing through them. Usually fill up a few at a time. Carry them over there. We've got to let them settle down a little bit. They usually settle down quite a bit once you pour them in. Putting two and a half quarts in each jar it's about 125,000 eggs in a quart, so we got over a quarter million eggs in each jar. Just kind of shake them a little to get them to settle down a little. Yeah, that's about good there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carry these over to the battery. So we put this, this is a stand pipe in here. This will help spread the water out. The water is going to go right down through it. So I'm just going to open up my nozzle here. And we should see some water start flowing in here pretty soon. There we go. So we'll keep the eggs rolling and tumbling like this so they can get plenty of oxygen. Each one has a chance to, to make it that way. They don't get piled up and stacked at the bottom and, and, and stick to one another. We'll just end up filling this whole side up here. We got four jars here right now with about two and a half quarts in each jar. And uh, hopefully we'll fill up this side and then the other side. And as you can see, if you, if you step over here, we got this whole side filled up already. We already have about 380 quarts in the hatchery here. Right here we have our thermometer and that tells us what the temp is obviously in the hatchery and what I'm trying to do is, is match the temperature to the, the lake temperatures in the spring. So right now we're running about 46 degrees and that should be pretty close to what the lake is at this time. As, as the spring goes on we'll, we'll heat that up and it'll end up reaching 55, 56 by the time they're hatching. How we regulate the temp, we have the cold water coming in right here and I have the hot water I can turn on right here. And, and this valve right here, the, the farther I turn it towards the red, it'll get warmer. And I can kind of tweak the temperature to whatever we want it to be. Right now we have it running as cold as it can be and that'd be 46. Uh, we don't have chillers here, so that's whatever water is coming right out of the city line. Okay, what we have here, this is our water gauge right here. It tells you how many gallons per minute are going in. Water's coming in right here. Right now we're running just over 40 gallons per minute. And uh, the more eggs we put on a battery, the, the more we have to turn it up. Water's co coming in the trough, it's running down each trough, it's running in and out of the jars, so we just have to keep a close eye on this to make sure the water's full the whole time. This one's ready.
Even though the eggs are treated with formalin to prevent fungus, some eggs will still get it. Dead and fungus covered eggs, which become opaque and float to the surface, are siphoned off and disposed of. Here is a series of photos showing how the eggs change from day one until hatching. You will notice the eggs get darker as the walleyes develop inside. After about three weeks, tails start poking out and they begin to hatch. They are about the size of a mosquito larva and are called fry. We typically have between a 70 and 80 percent hatch rate. The fry swim up towards the surface, eventually getting sucked out of the drain at the top of the jar and ending up in the trough below. From here they go down the drain to the next trough until they reach the pipe in the floor. They take a ride through the pipe and finally bubble up into a tank. This dark cloud is actually several million walleye fry. A fine mesh seine is used to remove them from the tank. Water is drained from the seine and the fry are poured into a bucket of water that is waiting on a scale. One pound of fry is approximately 100,000 fish. The fry are then transferred to a jug for transport. The air is pushed out of the jug, the cap is screwed on, and then it is filled with oxygen. All the fry that are stocked are recorded on this marker board. Once the jugs are ready, they are loaded into a boat to be taken to the lake. If they are going to be taken great distances, they are loaded into a tank of water to stay cool. If a jug has a leak, it is taken back in and the fryer transferred to a new jug. The fryer either stock directly into lakes or into ponds to grow throughout the summer. Even though we may be stocking millions of fry into a lake, only a small percentage makes it back to the angler.